Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. We are starting unit four. So looking at 4.1, what we are doing is examining relationships with scatter plots plus correlation. Now, what I have done is I have preloaded all of the notes on here. So uh, this video hopefully won't be long. However, you are going to need to pause to write some things down, okay? So I'm gonna go fairly quickly. Please pause, rewind it if you need to, and write these things down in your notes. These are all gonna be really important. All right, so here we go. So what is a scatter plot? Well, if you remember, that's where the dots either are rising or falling. But before we get into that, let's look at the left side. We've got an X and Y axis. The X axis at the bottom, that is our explanatory variable. It explains what is going on. On the Y axis, the vertical axis, that's our response variable. All right, let's look at the different types of scatter plots. So if the dots are rising, that is a positive correlation. As the explanatory variable increases, the response variable increases, okay? They do the same thing. Or you could say it in reverse, you could say as the explanatory variable decreases, the response variable decreases. All right, you may wanna pause and write that down because I'm gonna keep going. Okay, if the dots are falling, that is a negative correlation. As the explanatory variable increases, the response variable decreases. Okay, so they do the opposite when it's a negative. They do the opposite. Or as the explanatory variable decreases, the response variable increases. Sorry, I forgot the letter E in response there. All right, so again, you may wanna pause and write that down, because I'm gonna keep going. Now, tell me about correlation. Well, correlation, ladies and gentlemen, uses the letter R, and you're gonna see that on the calculator too in a little bit. It tells us two things. One, it tells us if it's positive or negative, whether the dots are rising or the dots are falling. Okay, that's one thing it tells us. The second thing it tells us is it tells us the strength of the relationship between the explanatory and response variable. How strongly are they related to each other? Okay, so again, you may want to pause at this moment and write that down. Now, correlation is a number anywhere from negative 1 to positive one. Again, correlation, it cannot be smaller than negative one and it cannot be bigger than one. It's a number somewhere from negative one to positive one. Okay, let's take a look at a few examples of some pictures. Okay, so starting on the left side with the red. Okay, that is the strongest negative correlation there is, R equals negative 1. You will notice those dots are in a perfectly straight line. Look at the middle, the blue one. That is the strongest positive correlation that there is. Those dots are in a perfectly straight line. If you remember, that's linear. Okay, R equals positive 1. And the weakest is there's no pattern at all. R equals zero, that would be the green one. All right, again, you may wanna pause. So R equals negative one and R equals one are equally strong, ladies and gentlemen. Again, the negative one and the positive one, they are equally strong. The plus and minus or the positive and negative, just tell us the direction of the dots. So don't let the negative fool you in thinking that it's always going to be weaker. No, 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 no. Okay, the positive and negative are just telling us the direction. The number tells us how strong or weak it is. All right, again, you may want to pause and get that written down.
All right. So here are some examples of some other types of dots. Starting on the left, okay, those dots are negative. They're kind of close together, okay, they're close together. That means there's a stronger relationship there. So that R value might be negative 0.9. The next one, you'll notice the dots are still going down, but they're a little further apart. So that R value might be about negative 0.5. Okay, again, the calculator is going to tell us these numbers when we have the data. I'm going to show you that in a little bit. Okay, the next one, the dots are positive. They're fairly close together. R might be 0.9. Then the next one, the last one, the dots are a little further apart, still positive. The R value might be 0.5. All right, again, you may want to pause and get that written down. Again, I already mentioned this, the calculator will actually tell us this number. We will do that shortly. Now, please write these down. For a number to be very strong, it's in, going to be in the 0.8s to 0.9s. Anything in the 0.8s or 0.9s, whether it's positive or negative, is very strong. Anything in the 0.6s and 0.7s, positive or negative, is strong. It's a strong relationship. Moderately strong, you know, kind of kind of weak, kind of strong, you know, moderately strong. Anything in the positive or negative 0.4s to positive and negative 0.5s. Weak, a weak relationship between the data points is anywhere in the 0.2s or 0.3s for positive and negative. And then very weak is anything between zero and point two, up to point two, all right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's keep going here, okay? So <clears throat> normally we would do this in class, but obviously with it being uh, distance learning, uh, it's kind of hard to do that. So I am going to change this so that we can see this a little bit better. Sorry, it might be kind of small on your screen. Let me increase it a little bit. Well, that was too much. I'm going to stick with this one right here. Okay, so <clears throat> here we're given some scatter plots, and we are given some numbers up above, and we have to match it. Let's see if I can make this just a little bit better. Okay, that's a little bit better. All right, so you will notice I've already got them filled in. So I want you to take a moment and just look at these. You don't have necessarily have to write these down. Okay, well, first of all, I started off by looking for the perfectly straight ones, like, like number three right here, okay? So you'll see with number three, okay, I started with number three, it's perfectly straight going down. I already know that that's R is negative one, so that takes care of B. And then I noticed number seven, they're perfectly straight going up. Well, that's positive one, so that was A, all right? Then what I did was I looked, okay, well, the weakest I know, the weakest is zero. Okay, well, which one can I not see a pattern on? Well, that would be number four. Okay, number four goes with letter C. Now, you'll notice that I've got uh, six left, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, three of them are positive and three of them are negative. Well, let me start with number one. Those dots are pretty close together. Now let me see what about another negative. I'm okay, so I'm gonna look at number whoops, I want a different color here. I wanna look at switch colors. Why aren't you switching colors on me? There we go. So here's one, I know it's negative. Number eight, I know it's negative, and number nine, I know it's negative. Well, the dots are closer together in number one, so that means that's gotta be a stronger negative. So that has to be letter E, negative 0.8, okay? Now, eight and nine, I noticed nine, they're a little bit closer than they are for eight. So the number for nine has to be a little bit higher than the number for eight. So there's two negatives left, right? There's negative 0.6 and there's negative 0.2. Well, the negative 0.6 is stronger, so that's why this one has to be G, and then the negative point two, that's weaker, that has to be, go to number eight. And then if you do the same thing with the positives, okay, process of elimination, you notice we've got a point eight, a positive point six, and a positive point two. Well, again, the point eight, the dots are going to be closer together, so that's going to be number six. 
no, um, F says 0. 0.6. Well, the dots are a little bit closer together for number two. And then number H, letter H, I'm sorry, number five, letter H, they're a little bit more spread out. All right, so again, the closer to one or negative one, the dots are going to be closer together. As, the, as you get closer to zero, the dots are going to be more spread out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this next part, let me put this back to normal. All right, again, you may want to hit pause at any time, folks, to get things written down. So here we go. Number one, alcohol has many effects on the body. One effect is a drop in body temperature. To study this effect, researchers give several different amounts of alcohol to mice and then measure the change in each mouse's body temperature in the 15 minutes after taking the alcohol. Well, the explanatory variable, folks, is the amount of alcohol. The response is the body temperature of the mouse or of the mice. Okay, and it says that the body temperature drops with the amount of alcohol that is drinking, that, that they are given. Okay, and that's true for humans too. You always hear about people sometimes in the winter uh, leaving a party and then being found frozen to death because they their body temperature was lower, they had stuff to drink, and they kind of got disoriented and lost, and then they ended up unfortunately passing away. But this is our relationship here. As the amount of alcohol goes up, the body temperature goes down. All right, number two. Let me just get rid of that altogether. How well does a child's height at age six predict height at age 16? To find out, measure the heights of a large group of children at age six. Wait until they reach age 16, then measure their height again. Well, we all know that hopefully you get taller than you were when you were six years old. So the explanatory variable is your height at age six, and the response variable is the height at age 16. So as you, you, as you're, you get older, okay, as you get older, uh, your height will increase. So it's a positive correlation. All right. Again, you may want to pause and get stuff written down. This next part is calculator stuff, and I'm going to repeat myself many times. And if you still get stuck, you are going to need to come back to this and rewatch this stuff. Okay, I also posted another video above this one on using the calculator if you need to rewatch this. I do expect you to be able to do this on your own when it comes to mastery quizzes and the test. So, first of all, putting data into the calculator. All right, well, this is very familiar, and you may want to pause and write these things down. We're going to hit that Stat Edit button, just like we did before. Okay, let me pull up my calculator. Okay, remember Stat Edit. Now, I have already preloaded numbers into my calculator, so don't worry about these right now. So I'm going to use List 1, and I'm going to use List 2. All right. Once we have the data typed into the calculator, we're then going to need to turn on, so I'm on number two now, I'm going to have to turn on the scatter plot. Okay, here are the steps. Second, y equals, pick number one, turn it on, and make sure the scatter plot is picked. Okay, let me demonstrate. So I go second, y equals, I pick number one, I make sure it's on by clicking enter on the on, and then I go down and I make sure it's the scatter plot. Okay, that first one is the scatter plot. All right, and then my X list is L1 and my Y list is L2. So it's turned on. Once I have it turned on, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to hit zoom nine. Okay. Now, before we do any of that, I want to do this with you. So everybody, I need you to do this, okay? Here we go. I need you to do this. I need you to go second, hit the number zero catalog. Again, second, zero catalog. I need you to scroll down all the way to diagnostic on. 
okay so let's see this is going to take me a little bit so i'm going to scroll all the way down to diagnostic on so i got to get to the d's all of these things are if you want to program your calculator it's just like a mini computer all right again diagnostic on i'm almost there okay so there we go so there's diagnostic off and diagnostic on notice this little triangle pointing at diagnostic on it has to be pointing there when you have it pointing there hit enter and then hit enter again it's very very important that you turn your diagnostic on okay so hopefully you did that again pause rewind that if you didn't get it okay and then to find the correlation step number four we're going to follow these steps stat calculate number four linear regression now i just got done showing you if you don't if you don't see r this is what you need to do again rewind watch this again all right here we go folks so two examples and then i'm done the following data shows the temperature lows and cereal sales for 13 randomly selected days so what we're going to do is we're going to put these in list number one this is our explanatory variable and these are going to go in list number two all right again the temperature the explanatory variable the explanatory variable is temperature outside the response variable is boxes of hot cereal sold all right so take a moment go ahead and pause take a moment and type those in okay now would be a good time to pause and type those in all right i'm going to keep going so i've already typed those numbers into my list so again let me go stat number one edit now just a reminder to clear it i don't want to clear mine because i've already typed them in you go to the top you hit the clear button and then hit the down arrow again to clear a list go to the top hit clear and then the down arrow all right but i don't want to do that all right so i've already typed in the temperatures in list one and the hot cereal sales in list two okay and i double checked them so i know they're all correct all right so i've got the numbers typed in now i want to see the scatter plot so again i'm going to go second y equals and once you've got this turned on you don't need to do it again so pick number one it's on make sure it's on and make sure it's the scatter plot okay you only need to do this once once this is set up you don't have to keep redoing this all right unless uh, when you close your app the calculator resets itself okay then you'll have to redo it all right so the next thing to see the scatter plot remember yeah you might want to do second quit to see the scatter plot we're going to do zoom nine isn't that gorgeous again zoom nine there's the scatter plot it's a beautiful scatter plot and i notice the dots are going down so it's a negative scatter plot all right so what i want you to do is i just want you to sketch we're not going to put any numbers on our x and y axis but we're just going to label just like I have here okay temperature outside is the explanatory variable boxes of hot cereal sold is the response and again all I did okay I kind of cheated I guess I copied the picture from the calculator and put it on here you just make a sketch of it okay a general sketch make sure the pattern looks like that when you sketch it that's all you're gonna have to do um, on the worksheets when we do those also okay haven't figured out what I'm gonna do for the test yet. I'm still working on that. All right, so again, there's our scatter plot. All right, now we're gonna answer a few questions here. Okay, we know that it's a negative correlation, but oh look, I found the R value. How did you do that, Mr. Ellering? All right, here we go, folks. We're gonna use the calculator to find this R value. Here we go. We're gonna go stat 
we're going to right arrow to calculate. Again, let me repeat that. Stat, right arrow to calculate, and we're going to pick number four, linear regression. All right, it should say list one, list two. You're going to hit enter one, two, three, four, five times. You got to hit enter five times. Now, there's all kinds of stuff in here that we're going to talk about, but that's in a future lesson. So what we're interested in is the R value right down at the bottom. See, R equals negative 0.967. Okay, I rounded that. That's my correlation. That's telling me how strong this relationship is, which is very strong. So negative 0.97, and that's where this net number came from, folks. Again, if you're having any issues with this, rewind, watch it again, or go watch the other video that I have posted right above this one. So as the temperature increases, the amount of hot cereal sold decreases. Okay, they're doing opposite, the opposite. Or you could say as the temperature decreases, the amount of hot cereal sold increases. Hot cereal, folks, is like oatmeal, things like that. Okay, one more of these. So in this situation, I am giving you the gas prices and the number of miles driven while on vacation. So here are some gas prices per gallon, and here are the number of miles driven while on vacation. All right, so what is the explanatory variable? Well, that would be the gas prices. What is the response? The average number of miles driven while on vacation. All right, so you're going to put these numbers in the calculator. So again, you're going to go stat, edit. Okay, go to the top, clear out that list. Go to the top, hit clear, and then the down arrow. All right, so I cleared out list one and list two. Now, I have already preloaded this, so boom, I've got my gas prices put in list one. Again, you just need to pause and put those in. And I'm going to go ahead and put the average number of miles driven in. Boom, I already got them put in. So that's the advantage of preloading all of this. All right, so I've got all of that information in list one, list two. Now, um, I already have my scatter plot turned on, so I don't need to do it again. So I'm going to go zoom nine. And there is the scatter plot for the gas prices and number of miles driven. And voila, ladies and gentlemen, there it is. So gas prices on the bottom, average number of miles driven on the side. And you'll notice the dots again are falling, so it's a negative correlation. All right. Now. Let's find that R value one more time. Let me go through that, here we go. So to find that R value, we're gonna go stat, calculate, number four. We're gonna hit enter five times. Now, if the R did not show up, that means you need to go back, rewind, and, and watch me do the diagnostic on to turn that R value on. So if you don't see this R, you did not turn on your diagnostic. And you'll notice it's also negative 0.97. And that's what I've got on here. The correlation is negative 0.97. That is very strong. Okay, very strong. So as the gas prices increase, the number of miles driven while on vacation decreases. As the gas prices decrease, the number of miles driven on vacation increases. All right, again, it's a negative. They do the opposite. All right, I know I didn't do a positive correlation, but I think you get the idea of what to do here, folks. All right, that video was still 24 minutes long, okay? So we'll see you in the next video. Bye.